Hi, it's Paul Maunder from Production Expert. In this video, aimed at people who are new to Pro Tools, I'll be demonstrating some of the workflows and tools for recording and editing a podcast using Pro Tools Intro. We'll look at recording dialogue or voiceover, using the Pro Tools Edit tools, importing some sound effects and music, and cutting it all together. Finally, we'll bounce this as a finished version in both WAV and MP3 formats. Let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, I've already created the session and I've got some audio in here, which is going to form part of the podcast. These are some interviews. But now let's make a new track and record the voiceover. So I'll go to the track menu, new, mono audio track. I'm going to call this Paul VO. It's quite important that you name the tracks properly because whatever you record onto it, file names are based on the track name. Change the track height by clicking here and make sure that in the I.O. column, I've got the input selected as whichever microphone input I'm using on my audio interface, and the output should be set so you can obviously hear it through the audio interface as well. Now, just one thing, if this column isn't shown, well, you could either go to the mix window, so that's command and plus at the top of the keyboard, and you could potentially choose the input there, but if it's not visible in the edit window and you want it to be, just go to this section and choose I.O. input output. Okay. Let's record enable this. We've actually got a script here. This is a mock script just to demonstrate the edit tools and so on. So it's about electric vehicles. And I'll no doubt make some mistakes, but that's a good thing because that gives us an opportunity to take a look at these edit tools. So I'll give them a best shot. Here we go. Hi, and welcome to the show. In this week's podcast, we're discussing electric vehicles. EV sh EV sales have shot up in recent years, spurred on by a combination of environmental awareness rising fuel costs. So some interesting points there. We'll be following this up in next week's episode with a discussion on electric delivery vehicles and the implications of that for the charging network and its future expansion. Thanks for listening. Okay, that's the basic voiceover recorded. Several mistakes in there, but now we can edit it. So I'm going to click on it. I want to zoom in a little bit here, actually, and I'm going to press T on the keyboard. So two of the most basic shortcuts are R for zoom out, T for zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in to here. I've got the smart tool selected. It might be just worth going through what these tools are quickly, actually. This one's a zoom tool. It allows you to do zooms into things like that. If you hold down the alt key or the option key, you can zoom out. The trim tool allows you to basically trim stuff like this. Now I'm in grid mode at the moment, which is one of the four edit modes and it's constrained to the grid and I actually don't want that. So I'm going to change this to slip mode. So in this particular video, I think we'll focus on mostly slip and shuffle mode. So with slip mode, you can freely make selections and trim things without any constraint. Next tool is the selector tool. And that in its basic form allows you to just make selections and then you can do things like deleting, you know, and we've also got the grabber tool. So the grabber tool lets you move stuff around either on the track or you can do it between tracks like this. I'll just undo that so I don't go over any audio. There are actually variants on several of these tools. You can tell when a tool has a variant because if it has a little triangle at the bottom and you click and hold, you can see there are alternate versions. But for the purposes of this video, we'll focus on the core functions of them. The next one along is the scrubber tool, which allows you to actually click and drag within a piece of audio and hear it at different speeds. In this week's podcast, we're just video. <laughs> This is good for identifying problems with the audio, like glitches and things. You can scan around with the scrubber tool, discussing it, find a problem, and then you can zoom in and you know edit it or do whatever's necessary from there. We've also got the pencil tool. This one, you can draw certain things with it. So one example of something you can do is if I change the track view here to volume, you could draw volume automation in. There's a lot more to it than that. Um, and you can also do waveform repairs with it. But for now, let's look at the smart tool. So that's the combination of these three. Okay. So I want to trim the start, move to the start, click and drag to trim. And then if I move just beyond the start here, we get the selector again. I can position the cursor. Hi, and welcome to the show. In this week's podcast, we're discussing electric vehicles, EV. Sh okay. EV sales. Have so there's a mistake. Now there's more than one way of doing this. I'm going to show you one method. Everybody has their own different preferences and it depends on what you're doing, how you like to work, and the circumstances under which you're doing the work. But I'm going to do this particular bit in shuffle mode. And this is just my method. I'm going to make a selection like that and then press delete or backspace. We're discussing electric vehicles. EV sales have shot up in recent years, spurred on by a combination of environmental awareness, 
rising fuel costs and a des- rising fuel costs and a desire for new tech in the UK. Okay, so rising fuel costs. I'm gonna. You can tell by the waveform that's rising fuel costs. That looks remarkably similar. We've just heard it, but you can tell visually that's the same thing. Environmental awareness, rising fuel costs, and a desire for new tech. In the UK alone, there were over 25,000 EV charging points across the country at the start of 2022, and the charging network is expanding all the time. I'll just mention something else. I'm manually scrolling. I really like to manually scroll around because I want complete freedom over it. But you could also change the scrolling mode to something such as continuous if you preferred. In the past year, the number of electric charging stations has increased by 57%. I'm just going to switch this back. Whilst this might sound impressive, the UK trails behind several other European countries with electric vehicle adoption. In 2022, 16.9% of new car registrations in Britain were EVs. In Norway, this figure is 86%. With all of this, fuel companies will need to rethink their business model going forward in order to keep pace. I think I'll do that one more time. Okay, so let's see. With all of this, With all of this, sometimes you can tell when it's a glitch. If it kind of tails off and there's a gap, even if you haven't listened to it recently, you can probably tell, you know, it's a re there's going to be a retake. So I'm I'm going to do a different method here. I'm going to cut here by pressing B. With all of this, find the original with all of this, which I suspected there. With all of this, it is. And um, notice how when I played it then, the cursor actually stopped where I pressed stop. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to turn this off, which is called insertion follows playback. Now select there, maybe zoom in a little bit more. I'm gonna just cut here. I'm keeping the breath this bit and deliberately cutting just before the word. Zoom out, so I'm using those R and T keys again. Select this, remember we're in shuffle mode. Now, when I'm in shuffle mode, if I press delete or backspace, it, it does remove it, but it moves the subsequent clips up. If I just undo it and show you the difference between that and slip mode, slip mode would just leave a gap, meaning that you had to then manually move it back. You know, so probably shuffle would be better in a lot of cases, such as the 86%. With all of this, fuel companies will need to rethink their business model going forward in order to keep pace with them, in order to keep pace with the move towards electric vehicles. Okay. Okay. Then there'll be an interview. Right. So let's cut this bit in order to keep pace, their business model going forward in order to keep pace with the move towards electric vehicles. Okay. Then there'll be an interview. Take that out. If I want to do a little fade out, I can... Hover over the end part. Remember, this is with the smart tool selected. Click and drag. You can do fade ins in a similar way. So if I'm in the very first part, I can trim. Very top part near the beginning or end, it's a fade in or fade out. And you can drag and determine you know, the length of it based on that. The re- only reason for the fades here really is to prevent any little audible glitches at the edit point. But what do people who've already bought EVs think? We spoke to some Tesla owners. And then the outro. Okay. So, because these are distinctly separate bits, I'm just going to trim that, do this. Sometimes you can edit on the fly, so I could play this and then do the fade. So, some interesting points there. We'll be following the... So, some interesting points there. Ah, so it's actually a retake. Cut there, delete that. I'm doing it in in slip mode now because that's what's currently selected. So, some interesting points there. We'll be following this up in next week's episode with a discussion on electric delivery vehicles and the implications of that for the charging network and its future expansion. Thanks for listening. Okay, and then just for some variety at the end, I'm going to click here, and rather than using trim, I'm going to press S, which is trim the end to the cursor. Okay, we've got all of voice over there. Now, what we could do is we could potentially put some compression on it. So there are several compressors here. And actually, one good thing about Pro Tools intro is, although a decent amount of stuff is included, you can also use third party or any other plugins that you've purchased independently. And I'm actually going to use another Avid one, which isn't included as standard with Pro Tools intro, but which is a separate purchase, which is the Pro Compressor. Let me just set this up. If you're not sure about compression, I mean, this is a whole subject in its own right. Let's just use uh, a preset. So I'll try this broadcast mail preset and that changes the settings for us. Let's see if it sounds any good. Hi, and welcome to the show. In this week's podcast, we're discussing electric vehicles. EV sales have shot up in recent years. Maybe slightly aggressive, and I think the release time's a bit slow. I'm going to drop the release time, have a lower ratio, 
It's taken a bit too much off, so I'm going to increase the threshold, see what that sounds like, and maybe increase the makeup gain a little. Hi, and welcome to the show. In this week's podcast, we're discussing electric vehicles. Yeah, okay, that's okay. I've not tried to compress it particularly heavily. Now, let's import some elements that we're going to use in this. So, in this folder here, I've got some music. Now, this is just from the YouTube Music Library. I could just drop this in, so I could drag it, drop it in. You can see this is an MP3, so it's going to convert it into WAV. It does it very quickly because it's such a short file. And to freely move this, I'll be in slip mode. You'll notice if I was in shuffle mode, when there's nothing else on the track, I can only move it to the start, but I can't move it anywhere else because um, that's basically how shuffle mode works. Normally, with shuffle mode, if you had several other things on the track, I'll just quickly show you here on this one, if I move this, I can move it to clip boundaries, but otherwise it's, it's a bit limited. So just be aware of that. So slip mode is sometimes good. I'm going to increase the track height here. This has got a name that's been derived from the file, but I don't want that one. I double click it. I'll just call this music. And the level of this is a bit high, so I'm going to use the clip gain feature to drop it down. Clip gain is shown here, little icon. If it's not shown, go to the view menu, clip, and just show clip gain info, which is the little thing I just adjusted there, or the clip gain line, which is actually that, so you can, if necessary, make other dynamic changes. But we'll hide the clip gain line for now. Okay, let's start putting this together. So we've got the intro music. I'm going to move these. Here's another point, actually. This block of audio here, I want this kind of to operate all as one because it's edited. So you've got options. You could consolidate it which is a function that actually renders a brand new clip with all of that self-contained within it, except it takes up a little bit of extra disk space. So actually quite a nice thing to do, rather than consolidating, is just to use a clip group. So if you go to the clip menu, group, you can make one, and it appears as though it's one clip, but actually within that, we've got all the separate components. You can ungroup it as well from here, ungroup, and you can see all the component parts. So let's just regroup that, move this over here and just see how this sounds. I'm not going to worry too much in this video about absolute levels, but I'm just going to make sure that we've got a relative balance between the components that sounds about right. Hi, and welcome to the show. In this week's podcast, we're discussing electric. Okay, that sounds all right. Now, at this point, this is where we're going to introduce some of the interviews. So let's just see what my last little piece was here. In order to keep pace with the move towards electric vehicles, just going to check on the script. Electric vehicles interview. Right. So that's this interview here. And I think I might just bring this, select the tracks. If you want to select more than one, shift click on the names, drag this down. Probably don't need to view these at such a large height now, those other two tracks or change that to medium. These ones though, we do want to change. So let's view these the larger size and I'm just going to move this bit of audio out of the way right so this is an interview that at the moment is too long let's see what we've got there's a word that or a phrase that we're hearing a lot banded around in the, in the industry uh, fuel disruption you know how much is disruption a challenge to the fuel industry going forward well I think it's going so this has been recorded in quite a noisy environment from that point on We've got two mics, basically. This is the interviewer, this is the interviewee. The guy at the top doesn't speak. So all this, if I solo this track, this is just all unwanted, you know, extraneous background noise and the spill from his mic. But well, I think it'll absolutely... Work. So we might as well just cut that. Going forward. Well. Right, I'm going to park the cursor here. Again, several ways of doing this. I Because I know I want to ditch it all, I'm just going to use that S shortcut. If pressing S doesn't do anything, the only reason for that could be if commands focus isn't switched on. Commands focus is this little A to Z button that enables the single keystroke commands from your computer keyboard. And if it's not on, just pressing S won't do anything. So yeah, make sure that's switched on. Now at the end of him, I'm just gonna put a little fade. So click there where I want the fade to start. And I want it to go from there to the end. As well as using the smart tool, I could also use the keyboard shortcut, which is G. So there's a family of three shortcuts actually with regards to fades. There's fade in, so on this next bit, if I want to do a fade in, I can press D, so that fades 
from the start of the clip to the cursor. G, as you saw, fades from the cursor to the end of the clip. And another one is a crossfade, which if I had two pieces of audio, I'll just mock this up just to show you quickly, move this to here. And if I wanted to do a crossfade between them, I could make a selection and then just press F and it'll do a crossfade. So let me undo that and cut this piece of audio now. I always like to use shortcuts, but you can obviously you can solo them from the track itself. But if you wanted to solo it a quicker way, wherever the cursor is positioned, it has to be in the track somewhere. You just press Shift S and you can see that's soloed the track. So trim the start of this, press A, so that trims the start. And then we'll do a little fade in here with the Smart tool. Do that. I'll, I'll try and overlap it with the other one so we don't get too much of a drop in level. We'll play these two, take it out of solo. I actually didn't need it in solo after all. How much is disruption a challenge to the fuel industry going forward? Well, I think it's going to be an enormous challenge. That sounded, that sounded okay. This, I don't want this to be as long as this. Not for this short podcast anyway. So let's just find an out point for him. But I think it absolutely will happen and it will have a profound impact on a number of players in the industry. So there's various factors as well I think that will influence that. So Let's just say we wanted to cut this bit out. So I'm going to click there, press B. We'll find another point to come in. Rows, we will definitely see an increase. I think additionally, customer requirements and customer needs will be changing. And Let's try that. Cut there. I'm just going to see if that will make sense. So I'm going to listen to this outgoing line. Profound impact on a number of players in the industry. Okay, it should make sense. Select this. Remember, we're in shuffle mode. Press delete and just see if this works on a number of players in the industry customer requirements and yeah and i'll just put a little fade on that cross fade so i did that a different way i did mention before you can select it and press f but you can also there's f if i undo it hover the mouse over the bottom section and this is again with that smart tool click and drag and you can change the duration of the cross fade players in the industry customer requirements and customer needs will be changing and there is a definite growth in people understanding that electric vehicles are a good thing for the environment. However, I don't think you can mention the customers without also mentioning the fact and the power of government in this. I think government is going to be the major factor in actually speeding up or slowing down the introduction of electric vehicles. But okay, so that is okay for now. And let's trim the end of this. We'll do it yet another way, which is just drag in the end here like this and i want to retain the fade so actually what i did then was i clicked just before that fade out so that i can click and drag it and retain the fade let's just check that that works some electric vehicles sounds okay let me just zoom in and have a look at this you can also actually move the crossfade or the fade out itself if you want to and that acts acts to trim the file another way electric vehicles no it's not right move it vehicles Sounds like there's something else just coming in there. I think we might try and split this up with something. So what we could do is go to this folder. These are some sound effects from Krotos. There's some Tesla vehicle passing sounds. If I can just find these. So there we go. Pass by. Let's use that as a, as a little transition. But before I bring it in, rather than just dragging it into empty space, I'm actually going to make a track. So I'll use a shortcut. Shift Command N. Let's make a stereo audio track and we'll call it SFX. There's our track. When I drop this in, if I was in shuffle mode, if I drag and drop it onto the track, it'll put it at the very start of the track, but I don't want that. I want it to be droppable wherever I choose. So I'll select slip mode, go back to here, find the effect, drag and drop it in. That's where it's going to go. There it is. Increase the track height just because I want to see it slightly larger. This will purely act as a transitional sound effect to indicate kind of a switch between sections of the podcast. Okay, drop it down maybe a little bit. And actually speeding up or slowing down the introduction of electric vehicles. Mm, it kind of covers his the S on the end of vehicles slightly, so I'll just move it to the right a bit. Electric vehicles. Mm, a little bit more. Down the introduction of electric vehicles. Okay, that's not bad. And now we'll bring in the rest of my, or the next part rather, of my dialogue, which is over here. Unmute these tracks, both the music and my dialogue. If you want to apply something to 
you know, several tracks at once, well, something such as muting or soloing, holding down the Alt key or the Option key is a do to all command. If you've got tracks selected, rather than doing it to all, hold down Alt with Shift and press it, and that's the do to all selected command. So both of them really useful on a day-to-day -day basis. Now I want to zoom in a bit more. Remember we're in slip mode at the moment, so we've got complete free control over this. Maybe put it there after the peak, but just in the decay part of that. See how this sounds. Electric vehicles. But what do people who've already bought EVs think? We spoke to some Tesla owners. I'll move it slightly. But what do people who've already bought EVs think? We spoke to some Tesla owners. Okay, and I'm going to move my final outgoing piece all the way over here. Now, of course, you might include some music in the middle of this podcast, but for the sake of this one, I think we'll just use the outro music at the very end. Let's see what this interview is. I think the way it's stitched together the different bits of technology, there's nothing in there that's completely... Maybe we should actually have this gradually fading up, some kind of background ambience. And actually, I do have this traffic passing. So it's not just EVs, but it's general road traffic. So this could help to transition into that. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Okay, now if I want this to overlap with that sound effect, obviously if I drop it onto this track, we run the risk of it, you know, cutting it off and just going over it. So I might want to create a second sound effects track. So let's do that. Shift Command N once again, one stereo audio track, I'll call it SFX2, like this. Drag this onto it. If you want all of the tracks in the edit window to perfectly fill the height of the edit window, here's another thing you can do. Hold down all three modifier keys. So on the Mac, that's Control, Option, Command, and then press the down arrow key on the keyboard, and they all fill perfectly the edit window height. Okay, let's try this here. So I want this little bit just to come in after my voice. Let's try it. Ink. We spoke to some Tesla owners. Maybe actually, I'll turn this down. So I've gone over here, turn it down. This is turning it down on the track level. You could turn it down with clip gain, but it, it operates differently. Let's just try this. We spoke to some Tesla owners. I think Maybe I want a bit of a longer kind of run into this. So actually, I'm going to move him after those first two kind of peaks in the audio for owners. I think the way it's stitched together. Maybe just moving left a little bit. I think the way it's stitched together the different bits of technology. And then I think we'll just turn this background ambience down a little bit. So I'll go into volume view and create a couple of breakpoints. That should do it. I think the way it's stitched together the different bits of technology, there's nothing in there that's completely revolutionary. There are loads of batteries, there are loads of sat navs, there's speed adjustable uh, cruise control, but the way that it links. Let's say we wanted to take that mistake out where he says, um, so solo his track, maybe I should just call this, I'll call it Vox Pops. Uh, cruise control. And that little bit as well, I think. Cruise control. So we'll take the opportunity to edit both of those out. So I've gone back into shuffle mode. With the selector tool as part of the smart tool, click and drag. Remember, the height at which you actually position the cursor really matters here. In the bottom half, it's the grabber. Top half, it's the selector. So maybe there to there. Speed adjustable cruise control. Yep. And just for the sake of it, let's put a little crossfade in. It actually sounded all right, but I'll put one in anyway just to be safe. Speed adjustable cruise control. Okay, and then reintroduce background ambience that we've added. Speed adjustable cruise control. But the way that it links all of those together to work is quite clever. And it's probably as a result of not being de designed by a car company. Yeah, we. I mean, you know, because this is real world interviews, you don't need to edit every glitch out. But there was a small one there. Probably as a result of not being de designed by... Like, you know, he messes up slightly. Being de designed by... Like... Design. So I'll just take that out. Once again, I'm still in shuffle mode. Do that, apply a crossfade, that should be perfect. Not being designed by a car company uh, that's been set in its ways. Uh, I like the fact that the suspension... You know, I'm, I'm being picky here. I'm going to take out that... Um, uh, I like the fact... Quite often people will flow one word into another. So he says... Uh, I like the fact... Yeah, uh, I like... And the edit might be tricky, but I think it's something we can get away with. I like the fact that... Yeah, it's okay ways. I like the fact that the suspension goes up when I get to be road. Right. 
this is weird. So this is something that needs to be edited. This is just a mistake. Let's see what we've got. Suspension goes up when I get to the road. What did he actually say? When I get to a place. Right, so we wanted to say when I get to a bump in the road, I think. Where I get to a bumpy road. To a bumpy road. Where I get to a bumpy road. When I get to a place. I'm going to edit from the two. To a place. To a place. To a place. You know, you can see where that is. If you can't see enough detail in the waveform, you can always increase the displayed height of it by going up here, clicking a couple of times, you know. So I might increase it to there and then just cut here. Trim the end of it with S. That would only work if you're in, you know, any mode other than shuffle. In shuffle, it won't, it won't do it. When I get, and then where I get to a bumpy road. So I'm looking for the two. Get to a bumpy, to a bumpy road. There it is. Press A this time. Now let's close that gap. And this is where shuffle mode makes a lot of sense. Click on it to select it, and then move this piece of audio. You notice. Before I let go of the mouse, we see that this little yellow outline, that's where it's going to go. It snaps it perfectly. Play from here. Suspension goes up when I get to a bumpy road. Still quite good, but not perfect. See, we've got that double kind of positive peak. It doesn't matter too much, but let's be specific and just do that. Suspension goes up when I get to a bumpy road, and it'll automatically do that. It seems to have been quite well thought through. Okay, and I could hear, you could hear that last part of someone's interview coming in there at the very end of a solo it once again you don't want that so let's just move this to there that should be about right thought through. okay and there's another interview here i think it's something for the future we are the pioneers now i just want to show you something actually i'm going to put him on his own tracks let's call this uh vox pops one and we'll call this next track, if I make a new mono track, Vox Pops 2, because I want to EQ this guy separately. Now, we do have different options about how we EQ things on a clip-by-clip -clip basis. One way would be clip effects. But in this case, I want to use one of the functions of Pro Tools Intro, which is the ability to use third-party plugins. So I'll put this on its own track, and we'll come back to this in a minute, and I want to use the FabFilter Pro Q3. But first, I just want to check the end of this other clip. And it'll automatically do that. It seems to have been quite well thought through. I think it's something for the future. Maybe I could do is just tailing this ambience off. Let me just see if I can copy a section. Uh, the that might do it. And it'll but the characteristic of it is different, actually. So maybe this is better. Yeah, let's do that. And I'll just move to the end and then paste this in. It just gives us a bit longer. We have a longer duration to work with. Check that that sounds OK. Three. Okay, and then because it's difficult, now that I've got this with a crossfade, it's hard to just do a fade on that using that kind of method because I want the fade to start here. So I'm actually going to do the fade. If I switch the track to volume view, I'm going to do it here with the grabber tool. Sometimes it is worth selecting the actual specific tool itself if you just want to be able to freely move it around and not have it changing to different things, you know. So sometimes I do choose the actual tool rather than the smart tool. Now, here I've got a situation where I have an unwanted breakpoint here. I want the fade to go from there to there. So I'm going to delete this by holding down the Alt key, the Option key, with the grabber. You've got the little minus next to the hand. Click and it just disappears like that. Bring this one in. Do that. It seems to have been quite well thought through. I think it's something for the future. Three. I think it's uh, and actually, I'm going to change the characteristic of this fade. It seems to tail off a bit too quick, so I'm going to put an extra breakpoint. The one I put just removed, I'm going to add something in about the same place, move that up so it's a bit gradual, and then it's more of a quick one once you start speaking. I think it's something for the future. Yeah. Okay, reasonable enough. Possibly we could just take one of these car effects here, an extra vehicle pass, select it, copy it with C, paste it, with V, uh, let's just solo the track, Shift S, uh, check that this sounds okay on its own. This is just going to act as another little bridging transition just to hide the slightly bad edit. And just have a longer tail off on this. That is probably going to be fine. And then view the volume automation. If you press minus at the top of the keyboard, it switches into volume view. And then with it selected, so if it isn't selected, double click with the 
selector, move to the top part with the trim tool, pull it up like that. Okay, let's see if that sounds any good. Automatically you do that, it seems to have been quite well thought through. I think it's something for the... Yeah, not bad. I want to extend this back, so switch it back into volume, sorry, waveform view, trim this back like that so it's a bit more of a gradual sort of uh, attack to it. And it'll automatically do that. It seems to have been quite well thought through. I think it's something for the future. Yeah, sounds all right. We are the pioneers now. Uh, in five or six years' time, everyone will drive an electric car. Okay, pretty good. So I mentioned about third-party plugins. On this track, I want to use a third-party EQ. Click on the insert. Anything you've got installed will be there. I've actually got the FabFilter Pro Q3 set as my preferred EQ, so that appears at the top of the list. And just run a bit of his audio. Maybe I'll do it in solo. I think it's something for the future. Okay. We are the pioneers now. Uh, in five or six years' time, everyone will drive an electric car. Obviously, you'd spend a bit more time on it than that, but just to illustrate the fact that you can just put plugins on the track and uh, all of the third-party ones you've purchased. If it's an AAX plugin, it's going to be there. We are the pioneers now. Uh, in five or six years' time, everyone will drive an electric car. I think we'll cut it there. We've got some extra content here, but I'm just not going to use it. it. Say you wanted to keep something on the timeline for future potential use, but you didn't want to run the risk of it playing. Well, you could select it and press Command M. That's now muted, and then you just press Command M again to get it back. So quite a convenient way of just keeping stuff, and it'll never play back. Okay, uh, one more transitional effect out of this. So we'll get one of those, a different one of the Tesla passbys. So previously we used passby 2. Let's try this one. Okay, might work. Drag this in. It might look like it's peaking, but remember, we increased the displayed height of the waveforms before. If you ever want to default them to their actual height, you can just double click on the zoom tool and it'll default it. And actually, everything will be fitted into the window, but it's, it's very useful for just getting stuff back to its native, you know, height. Zoom back in again. Put this here. That should act as a nice transition out of it. Everyone will drive an electric car. And if it's a bit loud, if you go into a volume view, pull it down like this. Remember, there's loads of ways of doing all of this. I'm just showing you the method I might use. But, you know, if you ask 10 people, you'll probably get 10 different ways. So take these as tips that you can utilize. You know, I'm not trying to show you the specifics of how you have to always edit a podcast. I'm just showing you stuff that you can think of and incorporate bits of in your own work. Everyone will drive an electric car. Okay, that's all right. And then drag the outro here. Obviously, you, like I said, you probably would add more music and stuff to this. This is just a quick sort of version of it. Drive an electric car. So some intro. Okay, bit of a longer gap. I just want it to sort of pause a little bit. Car. So some interesting points there. We'll be following this up in next week. And then I, I want this just to tail off in the background, this little bit of ambience. I'll just show you what this is. So I'm going to cut it here. Press S and then want it to fade from there to the end. So I'm going to press G again, fade from the cursor to the end. That should be okay. So some interesting points there. We'll be following this up in next week's episode with a discussion on electric delivery vehicles and the implications of that for the child. Okay, now we'll just put the outro music, which is going to be just the same as the intro music, to copy a file and drag it to a different location. Hold down the Alt key, drag it like this, move it to where you want it to go. And that should be it. So I'll just play the very last part of my voiceover and its future expansion. Thanks for listening. That's a bit sudden, I think. So maybe I could actually have some sort of extra transition into that. So somewhere I have a reverse cymbal sound. There it is. Drop this in. I mean, I could class this as a sound effect because I'm trying to keep the track count down. Maybe I want this just to go into there. I'll tell you another thing, actually. Say that that's the point, the reference point, and I want that to snap to the start of this file. Well, I could use what's called a sync point. So a sync point is like a little reference point that you can use for snapping purposes and for moving the clip around on the timeline. So decide where you want it to go. I want it to be dead in the middle. Press on the keyboard, command, and comma. And that little triangle is the sync point. Now, where do I want that to snap to? Well, I want it to snap to about the start of this audio file, but not the start of the clip, the start of the audio. So now I'm going to actually 
tab to that. So yet another little thing just to show you. Tab to transients is this button. When that's active, if you click somewhere, press tab, tab again, it's going to tab to the first detected transient. And it'll, as you press it repeatedly, if I just zoom out, it'll go between what Pro Tools considers to be transients. They're a little bit indistinct in this piece of audio, but certainly for picking up the start, it's a really good thing. Now, here's the thing. With the sync point, to snap that to this cursor location, a little shortcut you can use, hold down Control and Shift. Remember, this is the Mac shortcut, Control and Shift. With the grabber tool, click on this. And now that sync point has snapped to where I previously had the cursor. And maybe that'll be a little bridging transition. I just knock the level down. I'm just kind of guessing. But here we go, Banshin. Thanks for listening. Okay, that sounds okay. So I'm just going to zoom out once again, like that. Oh, yeah. I was doing that instinctively. Here's another thing. Say you're zoomed in and you want to fit the entire width of the edit window in. There's a shortcut, which is Option A. So Option A, Alt A does that. And now we can see everything on the timeline fitted in, including that mute clip, which, you know, isn't that important, but it's there. So now let's say we wanted to optimize the level a little bit. It all sounds broadly okay. We're not going to play it through again. We've heard enough of it, but I could potentially on the master just put something to increase the overall level. I'm going to use Maxim, which is included with Pro Tools intro. So this is a limiter and the ceiling indicates the maximum level that it's going to hit at some point, or it could hit I don't want it to go over about minus one. So now I'm just going to play a little bit of the voiceover or maybe a section of the interview and just pull the threshold down. So the more you pull it down, the louder it gets. I'm just going to give it a few more dB of level. Challenge. Again, I think there is an element of timing to that disruption, but I think it absolutely will happen and it will have a... That sounds all right. Now to bounce this to disk, make a selection. A couple of ways you can do this. I'm going to click on the last clip and then I'm going to press shift return and it selects from there to the start, or you could click and drag with the selector tool like this, you know, or if you really wanted to, you could always import start and end values over here. But personally, I think it's quicker just to select it, shift return, select the entire thing from start to finish like that. Okay, now we'll do bounce to disk and we're gonna create, as I said previously, a WAV version and an MP3 version as well. So we're gonna go to the file menu and we're gonna choose bounce mix and then I want to make a WAV file let's just call this podcast episode one and then we'll bounce this if it's offline it'll do it quicker than real time so that really helps and then bounce again this time we'll do it as an mp3 podcast episode one okay there's going to be some extra options which come up here. These are the quality options. So let's say the requirement was, we were given a spec, say it was it was 256 kilobits per second. The encoding speed is so quick on any decent, half decent computer, there's no point in choosing the fastest encoding time because the even the highest quality is going to be really quick anyway. Podcast episode one, artist, if you really want, pull that in. And... Uh, any any genre or any other things you could put in there as well. Click OK. And that's bounced. And those files should now be in the bounced files folder for the session. So let's take a look at it. Here's the session folder, bounced files. There it is, our WAV file and our MP3. So I hope you found that useful. You know, there's a lot that you can do with Pro Tools intro. And this is just showing you some of the basic edit tools and how you might go about editing a podcast. We'll be covering more Pro Tools intro content in the near future. So keep an eye on the Production Expert blog for that. Thanks for watching.